Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the Fishing for a Reason podcast, where we like to catch more fish and have more fun. My name is Jamie Props with Anglers Unlimited. And... And I'm Scott with Anglers Unlimited and Anglers Unlimited Charters. And we're going to talk about crabbing today. Yeah. Talk about what to use, where to go, and how to catch more crab. Because we not only like to fish, we like to crab. We like to crab. And it's one of those sports that's like, if fishing's slow or if nothing's open, you guarantee you're going to go home with a crab dinner, which is a win in my book. So where do you want to start? Well, why don't you tell us about crab gear, Jamie, what you use and what your setup is? Okay. So what we typically use is just one of those standard crab pots that you can buy at any local sporting goods store. And just for context, there's like crab packages that a lot of guys sell that are really inexpensive. So if you're brand freaking new and you're like, I don't I don't know if I want to spend a whole bunch of money on a really nice crab pot then go get the cheap stuff. Like start with one of those square traps, make sure everything is nice and secure before you send it down. But I would just say with crabbing, it's one of those things just get going. So if you are on a budget, get one of those little packages. The one thing that depending on the store that you go to, I highly, 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 highly recommend you get leaded line. Get leaded line. Don't use that yellow floating stuff and weight it down. It's just, it can get caught in other people's propellers it's it's a pain and it's just it floats we really that leaded line is going to guarantee that your line is going to be nice and down in the water um it's going to make sure that the pot stays secure on the bottom because it's heavier it's just the best way to go you want to use a red and white float that's what you legally need to use on your crab pot and it's always a good idea to use about 100 foot of that leaded line on your crab pot so we have a minimum of 100 on ours not going to lie. We have had times where you had shorter line length, but really knowing your line length is super important. So you don't set the pot with less line in shallower water. So that's a big tip as well. We always have one of those crab gauge on its pink and it just gives you a quick reference to measure the crab to know if it's a legal size, a keeper or not. And then bait. We actually just went out the other day. You want to tell tell them about our little experiment and what the result is of bait so, choice? So, you know, I've used pork, chicken, salmon are probably the three main things that we use. Whatever I can find cheapest. And if I got salmon carcasses from fishing, we use those. So we had some salmon carcasses this year. We did two pots. We got salmon and we got chicken. And we put them in two different spots. I think the salmon... Maybe did a little better the first day, but it was at a different spot. So we moved them both together, salmon, chicken, next to each other. The results were inconclusive. Both caught the same amount of crab. So some kind of meat to get the crab into the pot is a good start. And then, you know, one thing that I think is important that people forget about is weighting your pot down. You have to weight your pot down And you have to place it in a spot that it is not going to get run over or swept away by currents. So Jamie's going to let me share my screen by, (laughs) and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you my screen here. And so for those of you that are actually listening on the podcast, we'll make sure to link in the show notes, the YouTube version (laughs) of this. You can see what Scott is showing and he'll describe it for you as well. So I'll show you here we are. We live close to Burroughs Bay here. You can see Burroughs Bay and there's a nice muddy shallow spot that's kind of on the eastern side of the bay. A lot of guys crab in this whole area on the east side. The current does come through here pretty good. You can see even today it gets up to 0.8 and then coming north it's two gets up to two knots. So your pot will get drug away in this bay even though it's in a bay. The other thing is I'll show you over here, this looks like a great spot to crab. It's kind of a little enclosed area here. But if you put your pot right here, guess what's right here? The Washington State Ferry runs about four (laughs) ferries every two hours in and out of here. So that's a bad spot. And it's all about not losing your pot because a derelict pot in Puget Sound can kill up to like 5,000 crabs a year. So imagine... How many pots get lost and how many crabs are getting killed because they get stuck in these pots and they can't get out before the, you know, each pot's supposed to have an escape ring with rot cord attached to it. So it eventually will rot and the crabs can get out, but it takes a while for that to happen. So you want to put your pots in a spot that 
it's out of a traffic lane. It's weighted down appropriately. You got everything tied on appropriately. And uh, we started using these C-Links. I wish I had one to show you, but it's this little clip that clips your float system onto the line. And then you can attach your line to the pot with these clips that will not come undone. A lot of people use carabiners. I've used carabiners before, and I've had seagrass get stuck into the carabiner and come unhooked from the pot. And they have floated. I was, I can show you exactly on the map where I was in. I was at Pawnell Point in Oak Harbor. And the float and the stick, the PVC pipe that was attached to a piece of line with a carabiner had come undone because of seagrass and floated over to Camino Island, Rocky Point. And I had a guy call me while I was on the boat and said, hey, I got your buoy over at uh, Camino Island. And I ran over and got it. So just making sure all your stuff is attached appropriately. You're in a good spot or weighted down appropriately. So you're not going to get run over, not get swept away by currents and other boats. And then you can kind of tell where all the uh, good crabbing spots are because you'll see other crab pots. So, and try not to sit on top of each other. You want to have a little bit of space in between your pots and then go out there and just throw them and, you know, let them soak for four or five hours. It's nice if you can leave them out overnight so that the tide will shift and the crabs will move around a little bit with the current. But if you can't, give them a good four or five hour soak and go back out and check them and see what you got. 85 feet right here. Well, that looks like a good happy crab pot. Wow. Sure. What's your method of weighting down your pots? What do you use? So the pots we're using now, they're octagon. They have a center bait tank well in the center and a downrigger ball fits inside of it. So I have 15 pounds in each one in addition to the bait and everything else. So they're pretty heavy. Another thing that we've done is we use a downrigger ball with a, a long line clip and clip that right onto a loop about eight feet from the crab trap. And that's a good, pretty secure way to weight them down as well. A lot of guys, you can use like window weights. I used to use like a weight set, just grab a couple of 10 pounders out of a weight set, put those in there, zip tie them in. There's all kinds of different ways you can weight them down, but it's important to have some weight in your crab pot. Absolutely. And since you have the chart up right now, do you mind showing and explaining to listeners and those that are watching this YouTube channel right now, some good spots if they are going out for the very first time, they're like, I have no idea where to go. <laughs> so depending on where you are, if you're in Oak Harbor, you're in probably one of the best crabbing spots in Puget Sound. And this is Ponell Point. Here's Oak Harbor on the left-hand side of the screen. This is Crescent Harbor. And this whole area in Crescent Harbor is good crabbing from the center all the way over to the eastern side to Ponell Point. If I zoom in, you can see Ponell Point. And you can crab all around Pawnell Point, both sides. See, it's muddy. There's a little deeper area here that's about 80 feet. That's a good area. And if you've been here a while, it used to be the ice, they called it the ice house because there used to be a little ice house here on the Whidbey Island uh, air station side. But so that's a really good spot. As you go north, you'll see people over here in Skagit Bay, just north of the Swinomish Channel. This is all good crabbing through here. The current rips through here, so you'll see guys see the shallow area just north of Ponell Point. Really good crabbing all through here, but you got to be careful with the traffic and the current. You come out to West Beach, the west side of Whidbey Island Naval Air Station, and just north of that, we'll crab from anywhere from, you see where it says Northgate Terrace here? Right here, all the way north to the Deception Pass State Park is a really good area. We talked about, let's see here, I get stuff popping up. We talked about Burroughs Bay. Probably another, you know, spot that's really good and popular is over here by Huckleberry Island, which is east of Anacortes. I'll zoom out and try to show you. Here is Cap Sani Marina. You come out of there, go east, a little northeast, and you'll see Huckleberry and what's the other islands here called? Saddleback. Dot Island. Island. Saddlebag. Yeah, yeah saddlebag. Right, right in front there by that little swale is a great spot. So this whole, yeah, this is all really good. Gets really shallow. Mud flats. Up by Jack Island is good. You can see this little mud shallow area right here. 
And then right now we're crabbing over. If you come out of uh, Skyline, Flounder Bay, we're crabbing over here by, by Decatur Frost. and Center and Frost Island over here, up here. So up here by Frost Island, you know, we fish here a lot for salmon and there's always commercial crab pots in this area right here. So this whole area kind of west of Decatur Island is is good crabbing as well. And can you so also that's show about... that spot on Blakely, that little oh, yeah. bay right there? That's a great spot too. And it's shallow. Yeah. So if you don't have like a hundred foot of line, that's a really good one to jump into. So Thatcher Bay, which uh, Jamie says is on the west side of uh, Blakely. You come up here by uh, Willow Island and then this whole area right in here. You'll see guys crab it in here. So there's, I mean, that's seven or eight great spots right around Anacortes that, and down by Oak Harbor that you can crab. And if someone is maybe in a different area or maybe they're not even in the San Juan Islands, when you're looking for a crab spot, what do you typically look for when it comes to the bottom? Yeah, you want to have a muddy kind of bottom. You don't want to be rocks where your pots are going to get, because the crabs are going to be crawling around in the mud, moving back and forth. The mouths and shallow bays. This bay right here by Lopez, I've never crabbed in here. I imagine it's pretty good right inside uh, Lopez Pass and, and down in this area here. I imagine that's pretty good. You would think this area right here, it looks good, but it's rocky. So it's not going to be as good at crabbing places where it's muddy, kind of shallow bottom. So awesome. So let's say you pull up a pot full of crab. What do you have to do to make sure you're in compliant legally? And how do you process your crab? What's your, are you a whole crab kind of guy? Are you a chop them in half kind of guy? What do you do? What's your process? Typically, we'll just chop them in half at the dock because it just makes it easier to clean up on the inside when you're, if you're cooking them inside. If we're, you know, want to cook them on the dock in a big pot on a turkey fryer, just leave them whole, cook them whole, and then clean them that way. That's really good too. And doing them in salt water is a fun way to do it. I've chopped them in half with a big knife, an axe, do it on the side of a bucket, pop them off on a cleat. And then you just kind of break them in half and clean out the lungs and all the organ meat that's inside. I like having them in half. It's just cleaner for me. Awesome. I'm actually going to share. So one thing that I love about the fishing community is there's never, a, there, there's always a plethora of new things to learn. So we chop them in half, as Scott said, it's just, it is a lot more convenient. And it's always been that way. People really prefer them whole. And a lot of reasons because they call it crab butter. You can actually... If I'm saying this right, Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but inside the top shell, when you cook a whole crab, you get what they call the crab butter, and some people will eat that. And I think it's the brown stuff. Isn't it the brown stuff? Butter, yeah. mustard. I've heard yeah. different things, but yeah. And I want to share my screen really quick because we were actually out with some friends. So one one thing that we love to do, just for a little tip for those of you that are in the San Juan Islands or visiting this area... Go drop your crab pots, go fishing, whatever, or maybe if fishing's not open, go visit the Blakely Island General Store. It is one of my favorite stops in the islands, and it is a stop that not everybody, especially if you're not from around the area, knows about. So you can get fuel there. It's a little bit pricey for fuel, but the reason we like to go is they have awesome ice cream and they also have beer on tap. And if you sit in one of the Adirondack chairs right along the water, it's the best most entertaining like boat slash we've seen orca swim by we've seen great people watching hilarious kids doing hilarious things it's just a really cool spot they have yard games it's a great place to take the family if you need a little break and just get on land but see something different and unique so with that being said we took our friends there actually it was last night and a good friend of ours was like oh she was watching us clean crab <laughs> with the hatchet. <laughs> and she said, well, we have this crab cl cracker thing. And I honestly had never heard of it, which is crazy that I haven't. So if you go to LFS, and we love our friends over at LFS Marine up in Bellingham. I'm going to share my screen. You can also order it online. But this is the crab cr cracker that my dear friend was telling me about. You just basically put the crab in the middle on this thing, press down, and presto. The shell basically stays on top. The two halves are down below. You rip them off, and it's really easy and quick to clean your crab that way. You could just do it on the dock. You could do it on your fillet table. But this little gem is definitely something I'm going to be purchasing. <laughs> Because sometimes with the hatchet, like Scott's got some skills, but I'll be honest, I miss sometimes. And I don't like to miss. It's not fun. So 
I don't feel like it's fun for the crab and I don't feel like it's fun for me. So I'm going to get this little crab crack, crack and crab cleaner and make my crab cracking experience a little more crack tack, crack tastic. How's that? That's great. You look so excited. <laughs> There's lots of ways to do it. There's lots of ways to do it. <laughs> There's a million sure. ways to do it. And for me, I like cool tools like that. So I'm going to go get one of those things and make my crab cracking experience different. Yeah. Any other hot tips for crabbing? Like, how do you like to cook them? What's your favorite way to cook them? What's your most unique way to cook them? Let's chat chat about that a little bit. Yeah, I think just boiling for me and then making either make crab cakes is always a good option. But yeah, just straight out of salt water with a good homemade cocktail sauce, ketchup, Worcestershire and some horseradish. That's my favorite, favorite way. Yeah. My go-to is salt water. And if you are going to cook them in salt water, don't use the marina water. Make sure you scoop the water while you're outside of the marina. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, I love just doing marina, or not marina, salt water. Boil them for maybe 10 minutes max. And because once you, once you bring the water to the boil, you put the crabs in, they're cold. So it'll actually make the boil go away. But if you go from 10 minutes from crabs in the water, it seems to be about perfect. And I do like melting butter, putting a little garlic, rosemary, and thyme chopped up in melted butter and having that to dip on the side. But if I'm honest, I generally just mowed those things down straight. <laughs> they taste so good. That's yeah. one thing about Dungies. They have so much flavor. Um, one of our other favorite things that we've been doing is crab omelets. So, you know, a lot of times you can't eat as much as we catch. I mean, five crab is a lot of crab per person. So if we, crack even just one half generally is one half of a crab cracked in an omelet is so good like you don't need anything but a little bit of cheese the crab brings enough saltiness to the egg that i just think it's like the best most pacific northwest breakfast you can possibly create so that's another favorite of mine and your crab cakes um we actually did do a crab cake cooking tutorial i'll make sure to link that below because scott is a master cook which is Part of the reason I married him, let's be real. I'm not much of a cook and he's kind of fantastic. So <laughs> watch that crab cake video. It's pretty darn good. And any other fun ways that you like to process your crab or cook your crab when you're experimenting that you want to share? I, actually, one more thing. So bait. I love chicken. For me, I don't know why. I think it's because it's so cheap. If you have your salmon carcasses, I think that's awesome. But I like to go to the store and find the cheapest drumsticks. And when you do buy chicken, make sure it has some skin on it. That oily skin, I don't know what it is about it, but it seems to draw the crab in. And to me, the, what I also like about the drumsticks is you can almost um, Tetris. You can Tetris them in <laughs> to the crab container and stuff the crap out of it. So you can guarantee that if you are leaving your crab pots in overnight or if you're going to be, you know, if there's a lot of hours of soaking time, by the time you pick up your pots, you probably will still have bait left over and a limit of crab, which makes it really convenient when you pull your crab out. You can just toss that thing right back in. I love it. Any other final words about crabbing? No, it's all I got. Have fun. Protect your pots. So anyway, wait your pots. Don't lose your pots. Don't you lose your pots. Have fun. Get to crabbing. And when you catch a limit, give some to the neighbors. They'll love you forever. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a beautiful day. Tight lines. We will catch you next week for another fantastic topic about fishing. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.